Today we're gonna start here and end here. Hey, my name is Jens and welcome on my YouTube channel Another Perspective. Today it's all about photography ideas you can try at home with dandelion clocks. It is raining for a couple of days, but luckily I could save a couple of dandelions because I'm challenging myself with Stefan and Wolfgang, two other photographers, because we want to know who can get the best and creative photo just with the dandelion. Intro. Although I have shown you a couple of my dandelion clock ideas in the last video, I'm not going to bore you today because I have improved my images and added a couple of new ideas to this video. Before I'm going to show you how I improved my images and what Stefan did, I just want to jump quickly through the process Wolfgang did to get this image here. Wolfgang's idea was to shoot a dandelion clock in flight while staying inside. Therefore, he uses a glass plate and a tripod and an iPad. He was experimenting with different colorful natural backgrounds on the iPad and then was combining everything together to get a fake image of a dandelion clock in flight. If you want to know more about how he created this image, I'm going to link the first part of this video in the description for you. I just got the information that it is actually called dandelion and not dandelion after saying it about 500 times wrong in the last video. So I'm really not sure if I want to change this right now. To grab and position the dandelion clocks, I used tweezers. My first idea was to create a soft, unrealistic background. Therefore, I used putty to position the dandelion clock on a plate and then I used milk. But when I took the first images, I was pretty disappointed because the images looked like this. And then I started adding water droplets and the results got better. But not good enough, so I changed my setup completely and I got those three images. If you want to know how I created those three images, you have to wait till the end of this video. Because now I want to focus on the new, even more improved images I'm going to show you today. Okay, now I want to share two techniques with you. I finally figured out how to create an amazing colorful background. And the second thing is, now I got a better solution how to create the water droplets. Let me show you. In the last video, I used this pump spray, which creates, I don't know if you can see it here. This one created very large water droplets, which did not really work very well. But now I got this pump spray. It's actually a hairspray. And this one works much better. It creates like fog. After being frustrated using the milk the last time, I had to give it another try because now I'm going to use colorful light source and the new pump spray. And as you can see here in this video, it really works very, very good. Then I ran some tests by setting some hotspot using a torch. Like this one. Because I don't like hard light, I used a handkerchief and rubber bands to soften the light. Maybe this looks a little bit better. Here I just pulled down the shadows a little bit in Lightroom afterwards, but that's not the image I want to show you today because it's not about faking the image afterwards, it's about taking the image. But first we have to spray a lot more. And then we are adding colors by using an RGB light. I have just ordered this one here from Amazon. And what I actually don't like that it, the cable is very, very short, but you can create any kind of light source and any kind of color you want. And it is pretty bright. <laughs> okay, back to our image. I have put the RGB light right above the dandelion clock and then our image looked like this. Is there still room for improvement? Yes, we have to pump 
a lot more. Maybe that was too much. Let's do it again. But then finally I must say that I was pretty satisfied with the result. What do you think? I guess the RGB light was about 30 euro on Amazon, but if you don't want to buy this, you can use, for example, a simple torch and some color paper. Just get very close and then you will get the same effect. All the image I'm going to show you right now were taken with the Sony A6300, an APC camera and the 90mm macro lens at a magnification of about, I guess it's 0.5 to 1 an aperture of 9, a shutter speed of 100 of a second and an ISO between 200 and 600. I really like this one. I just pulled the haze in Lightroom and the milk became completely black. And that's also one of my favorite images. It looks kind of psychedelic, right? Okay, great. That was my contribution to the challenge between Wolfgang, Stefan and me, who can do the most creative Dandelion clock image. I hope you like it. I've just received the video of Stefan and I'm really curious about what he got for us. Let's take a look. Hey, Jens. All right, so here we are. And the first thing that I recommend when doing anything like this is to have several backups. These Dandelions are incredibly fragile, so pick a few if you're going to be using them and have a few extra just in case. Yeah, that's true. Mine got pretty rotten, so I had to replace it a couple of times. So I'm going relatively simple today. I've decided to concentrate on more environment, and I'm using a few props from my dead critter collection. I'm not sure if I want that, but I got a dead hornet in the freezer for about three years. And yeah, I guess that does sound a little bit morbid, but they make for great subjects as nature isn't reliable or patient. So in the end here, I decided that the ladybug on the dandelion was a little bit overdone. And of course there's the flower and the seeds, so I took a picture of both and just blended them together in Photoshop. What do you think? I think that's a good start. My next photo was relatively simple. I just used a few of my props, a nice softbox and a little video light. And here I've just arranged them how I want them with a black background. And it's as simple as that. That is pretty cool. I mean, if you have like four or five dead ladybugs. It's really just trial and error to get the right composition. And you might have to stack your photos as well to make sure everything's sharp and in focus. Be patient. Be patient. Yeah, that should be the title of this video. <laughs> okay, this next one's a bit tricky and involves fire. Who doesn't love fire, right? I recommend you have several dandelions around because you're probably going to need a few tries. That fire idea looks pretty cool. I will definitely give that a try. This one's all about timing. With your camera on a tripod, use manual focus to find your subject, set a timer with a low shutter speed, and it's just about capturing that perfect moment. I don't know, don't your camera offer a burst mode? It burns very quickly as you can see, and because it's a long exposure, you're probably going to have to edit some of the photo out. Here's the picture straight out of camera. And here's my final edit. And for my last photo, I decided to take a really close macro photo of a single dandelion seed. And just for fun and something different, I wanted to throw it into a composite. So I used an old picture of an eye that I took and combined the two. Here's the end result. That's also pretty cool, and not just because I really love iris photography here. I had a lot of fun doing this shoot and making this video with Wolfgang and Jens. And wrapping up, a few last tips that I'd give you is just be creative. Seek inspiration by looking at other photos, but put your own spin on it. Be patient, and the beauty of this art is that there's no right and wrong. Push the limits, and if you love it at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. Thanks guys. Wow, that was really amazing. I didn't expect to see so many different images. What I really like about this video is that three photographers, one idea, and everyone got completely different setups and completely different ideas. That was the first time I've created a video like this, like competing with other photographers, with Stefan and Wolfgang. And I've really not expected to see and get so many different inspirations and photography ideas. What about you? Would you like to see more videos like this? I'm still in contact with Stefan and Wolfgang and we are developing new ideas 
which we of course want to share with you. And at the end of this video, I just have one final question for you. Who did take the most creative image with the dandelion clock? For me, actually, there's no winner. I had so much fun. I learned a lot the last couple of days. We have seen so many different creative photos. So I'm just wanting to hear your feedback. What you think of this kind of content? Should we do more? So stay healthy and hopefully see you in the next video. Oh, and there's one last thing. Please visit Stefan and Wolfgang's YouTube channel. You will not regret it.